All right, guys, it is a new day and hopefully the day where we finish this chore jacket from Reese Cooper. And if you guys haven't been tuning in for this whole series, I have been working from scratch to make this jacket from a kit that the designer Reese Cooper made. It's such a cool concept. I have never made a piece of clothing in my life, but we have come so far, but there is also still so far to go. So let's do this thing. But first, I've looked into it, and a very, very small percentage of you are actually subscribed to the channel. It's completely free. Just press that button, and you will not regret it. Thank you so much. Next, we're going to do the front. There are three notches at the edge of the front panel. The second notch marks the fold line for the front of the jacket. The third marks where the collar ends. Crease both front panels along the second notch, folding outward. Next, mark half inch seam allowance from the edge of the pieces shown. Then mark three and a half inches from the edge. We'll call this marking R1. Jesus, this is complicated. Um, okay, I'm gonna need to kind of conceptualize this a bit and then do it. Let's see what happens. So I think I've got it all figured out. Um, I've marked it up to do an L, which is the next step. I've got all the notches worked out. Basically, the only question was, it never specifies whether something's supposed to be inside out or not. Like I'm not sure if the inside of the fabric is supposed to fold over so you can see it on the outside. And I tried that, but it just doesn't feel right. So I think it makes more sense to go like this and do it from the outside so it just has a fold like that. And there'll be some edge stitches going around if you look further ahead. It's fucking complicated. Like, I don't know, here, take a look at this booklet. So we've got all this stuff about the notches and all the folding and whatnot. And then it says, we're now going to make an L-shaped stitch coming down from the third notch and across the front half an inch from the edge. So I think what that is supposed to be is that right there. That's us looking at it from the inside out. So it'll be this line and then going over that way. That one was a mistake right there. Just ignore that. I think I just got to do it. I don't know. It's tough. Um, I don't know if I'm doing it right, but I think whether I fold it inside out or not, it'll look okay in the end. It's just a difference in style, but I, I hope I'm doing it right. Okay, done and dusted. There's that little L there for whatever reason. And then now make a small cut diagonally to the bottom corner of the L stitch. Fold inside out, repeat on both sides. That I don't understand, but I mean, I'll, I'll do it. I have a zero clue what that was for, and now I'm scared that I like messed something up. I, I have to do the other side now, so I may just not do that step yet until I understand what it's for on the other side. But I think while we've got this side worked out, we might as well just move on and then do all of the other side for the kind of button closure area. So next we're going to stitch the front of the jacket. Crease your seam allowance so it lines up on top of R1. Make an edge stitch on top of R1. Next, edge stitch the placket. Plaque? I don't, I don't know that word. See, I don't know these things, you guys. I'm ignorant. Um, anyway, so we come down here and down there. That's straightforward enough. I can do that. All right, well, here is one side of the front of this thing done. There are those edge stitches there. Um, again, I really don't know if this is how I'm supposed to do it, but at least the lines are nice and straight, so I'm happy with that. And the kind of allowances and spacing that I've done here, I think, are correct. It's just, I don't know if, if it's facing the right way, but in the end, you know, it is how I made it. So I think we're good. But now I got to do the other fucking side. Oh, Jesus. All right, both sides of the front are somehow done. We did it, and now we have to move on it. Actually, it really, really is starting to feel like a real piece of clothing now. It's kind of crazy. 25. For the collar, mark 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance around all edges of the collar pattern pieces, both on the top and bottom piece. Sandwich both pieces together and sew the sides and top of the collar along that seam allowance. Make sure to not sew all the way to the bottom and leave the 3 8 bottom seam allowance unsewn. Okay, that is a collar. So, what's next? And yeah, we did leave that bottom one undone, as we're supposed to, right? So we did that, we did that, we did that, good, good. So next, cut the top corners of the collar across. Refer to diagram. 
So kind of go diagonally along the top there. Ooh, this is going to be like the easiest step we've had so far. Let's do it. Ooh, never mind. I didn't do what I was supposed to do. That's, that's the bottom. And that's the top. I sewed the wrong thing. <sighs> and we're back. I had to undo every stitch from that last one that I did wrong and redo it. That takes so long, but it is far from the first time I've had to do that on this project. So back to it. We've got to cut these corners off the top. Done and done. And I was right. It was one of the easiest steps we've had in a very long time. What's next? Fold the bottom layer back on the 3 8 of an inch seam allowance you marked. Press it down with your iron so it doesn't get in the way for the next step. So it's the bottom layer only. And it goes inward, fold and press along seam allowance line. I'm confused, but okay, I'll do it. All right, that's done for whatever reason I did that for. What's next? Time to put on the collar. Hell yeah, and then pop the collar. We're, we're not going to do that. Um, point A and point B are where the seam ends three us away from the edge. Okay? Take point A and match it to point C. Rotating the collar, take point B and match it to point D. Okay. Okay, so I think I'm flipping it over. Now the collar is rotated and the points line up. You're going to sew down the collar. Okay. So again, we're into just kind of like the guesswork portion of our program. I'm pretty sure what it's supposed to do, looking at the picture, is it kind of comes, I'll sew, not slow, sew this going around and I'll be like folding it, the collar here, 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 and up to here, just through that one layer right there. I guess I'll try it. Okay, I think, so, yeah, somehow that actually worked. So I think now I've got to turn this inside out. Okay, there we go. And then, yeah, I believe I just fold this down over the seam and then do an edge stitch that goes all the way around it, I think. Holy fuck, I fucking just wung it, as in the past tense of wing it. And it actually worked. Like, that's a collar, and it looks right, and it... Jesus Christ, I don't know how I pulled that one off. Um, the only thing I'm worried about is the fronts. I hope we finish those at some point. They, they're they very unfinished looking right now. So we'll, I guess we'll wait and see on that. And if not, I'll, I'll figure something out and we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But what is next? Step 31, I can't believe we're fucking here already. Next, we're going to close the bottom and the sleeves. Mark seam allowance lines one inch from the edge and a quarter inch from the edge on the outside with your pencil. Fold inward along those lines and use your iron to crease. Looking at the inside of the sleeve, sew the fold down with an edge stitch. Oh, that makes perfect sense. Okay, cool. Complete these steps for both sleeves and the bottom of the jacket. Easy fucking peasy, I can do that. I shouldn't have said that. Again, that's definitely a jinx. And that is a finished sleeve. Looks good to me. I'm happy with it. It was nice and easy. Um, kind of weird because it's the first thing we've had to go all the way around on without like reaching an end point necessarily. But overall, not bad. So now we just got to do the other sleeve in the hem. And yeah, fuck, we're getting there. Holy shit, it's done. We got cuffs and hems and... I think all that's left now is finishing it, um, like snaps and patches and stuff, and we'll get to that. But first, there's this up here, which is still kind of raw, and I've got to figure that out. I think I've got to look back at those steps, like there was the thing about the diagonal line cut in it, maybe that has to do with it, or maybe i got to figure out my own thing to do with it. So let's, let's figure that out now. So I actually ended up folding these over and doing kind of an edge stitch there at a bit of a diagonal angle there. This is the first time I would say that I have knowingly and intentionally gone off book, off the steps from the instructional booklet, but I think it worked out. 
I really think that something got cut wrong and that collar was supposed to go over further, but it didn't and just ended up making things look weird where they should have been covered. So I had to kind of improvise, but I'm totally fine with it. It worked out great. So it looks to me like the next steps are all related to the snaps. So 32. Next, we're going to mark the buttons. Do this the same way that we mark the corners of the pockets by making a small hole in the pattern piece first. The buttonhole placements are marked in descending order. Yep, so we go by the pattern paper. Again, I think that we can do this on our own. I think we can decide where our buttons go. It looks like there's one, two, three, four, five. And I think it's easy enough to just figure those out ourselves and figure out the best place for me, for where I want them. So moving on, start with the left side of the jacket, doing the top snaps first. Pierce a hole where you mark the placement with a sharp object. Use the edge of a scissor to make the hole bigger if necessary. All right, so let's figure out where we're putting these and um, make some holes. So I looked at some other pieces of mine for reference, and I'd say I definitely want a button like right up towards the top so that you can snap it nice and tight around the neck. I think that makes sense. And then the bottom, looking at other pieces, it looks like they mostly leave a bit of space at the bottom. So it's not like the last button is right at the bottom. So let's just go from there and figure out our placement. All right, so I laid everything out, took kind of distances between things, and I think this is right where I wanna be right here. That seems perfect in my opinion. Thirty-four. Place the snaps down and hammer them following the instructions provided with the snap kit. Snap kit time, okay. All right, there are a lot of pieces here. Buttons, eyelets, sockets, studs, anvil, flaring tool. Okay, so button A. I believe that's this guy. Eyelet, I think, is the backside of this guy. Or maybe it's the other way around. I think it might be. Yeah. Okay, socket, stud, anvil, and our flaring tool. Okay, so it looks like for this, we need to make this top piece kind of pop in to this piece like that on either side of the fabric. And I get to use a hammer to do it, so that's very, very exciting stuff. Okay, there's that top one. We got him to pop through to the other side. So now we just have to set this thing up and get hammering. Okay, I, um, I think that is in. And it says I'm supposed to go through this whole um, front first and then do the other side, but I kind of want to do the other side of this top button to make sure it actually snaps in and works like it's supposed to before I go and do everything else. So I whacked my finger, which immediately made a blood blister, but I guess that's just one of the, uh, the pitfalls of this line of work, I suppose. But in the end, it did work out. I've got this, and now we got to see if they actually snap together. And indeed they do. Thank God that worked. So now we just get to work on doing the rest of them. And just like that, all five of our front buttons are on our jacket and we just got to do the same thing in the back. And this is like the most fun step I've had this whole project. I really appreciate that we get to save the best for last, or almost the last. There's still the patches after this. But, fuck yeah, let's hammer some more shit. Alright, they're all done and they all work and we're done with the fucking buttons. Holy shit! To attach the sleeve label, take a needle and some thread and just tack stitch down the corners on the wrist of the left sleeve. All right, I'm gonna need to look up what a tack stitch is, but I bet it's easy enough. It's just in the corners, like, fuck yeah, easy peasy. Hi, in this brief tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to do a tacking stitch. Okay, I watched the very kind woman's tutorial, and I was right, it's literally like the easiest stitch you can do. It's actually really similar, I would say, in terms of how we're going to do it on this um, tag to how brands like uh, Gucci do their neck tags, things like that. 
we are just doing some really simple stitches at the corners. So let's fucking do it. All right, I think we're gonna put them right about there. So let's do our nice and easy tack stitches. All right, I think it uh, turned out great. I decided to really mimic the Gucci label vibes with those kind of like diagonal tack stitches. Now I know what they're called. And yeah, I'm super happy with that. Just ignore that little wonkiness there. That doesn't exist. Um, yeah, everything's perfect. 38, this one is optional. To finish the jacket, take the three patches included and edge stitch these wherever you please on the jacket. Fuck yeah, time to just do our own thing. And speaking of which, something that I was thinking about, like with these buttons and the, the collar up there, me just like deciding to do my own thing is something I would not have dreamed of when I started this project. I was following these steps as exactly as I humanly could. So just even in the process of doing this, I'm taking more and more risks and taking more and more decisions into my own hands and doing it my own way. And that's really cool. It's really kind of empowering feeling. I love it. Anyway, here are our patches. So we have got three of these bad boys, and honestly, I love all of them. So I'm definitely gonna use all of them. Just gotta figure out which ones are gonna go where. I would say that this one is my personal favorite. So I think I'm gonna take him and put him up on the chest here, like even with the chest pocket on the other side. I'm starting to second guess myself. I don't know if that's the right spot. Like, do I move him? Do I put him on the pocket here? I don't know. Fuck. What do I do? What do I do? Jesus. Yeah, now that's not looking right. Fuck. That's it. That's what I needed. So the circle works much better. So the problem, I think, was that this, the shape of this, the squareness of it, just looked weird against the pocket, but when you put a circle there, it's a nice new element, a new shape being added. So let's go with that. So uh, it turns out the ma machine stitching these on is not the answer. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna un <laughs> undo this. Look at it going through, oh my god, it's so fucking bad. I felt so good doing it too. I was like, I'm killing it. Oh god. Oh my fucking god, getting that thing off was a nightmare. I think because of how thick the patch is, it just did them really fucking tight. But I got it off and now we're gonna hand sew this on. Well guys, I, uh, I found something out, and that is that I fucking suck at hand sewing. Oh god, it went real slow. But I got it done, finally. And now we gotta just do the other two, figure out where they're going. I'm guessing they're gonna go on kind of like the upper arms, bicep area. So let's fucking do it. And the patches are done. I went with the circle there. We got this guy on the arm. And I actually chose to put this guy on that lower pocket there. And uh, I'm super pleased about that. And now, I would say it's done, except for the fact that we have a rogue fucking inner pocket that I just neglected to do earlier. And I was like, I'll do it later. And I didn't do it. So I've got to figure out what I'm doing with that. Okay, now that everything is in place, it actually fits much better. So I think this is where it's supposed to be, right behind that chest pocket. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew it down this edge is the left one, then the bottom, and then I'm gonna have it go underneath this little flap right there, and I'm just gonna sew it right in there. And hopefully it looks good having that extra stitch coming along this edge stitch right there, because it will be visible from the outside, so fingers crossed there. Actually, I just had a fucking epiphany. The first stitch I'll do is this one, and I'll flip it over, and sew it just to this flap that's right there so that that stitch does not show through the front. I'm a fucking genius, guys. All right, I did my idea and the lines ended up exactly as they should. Like it worked out better than I even could have imagined. So there's the pocket from the inside. 
Guys, the jacket's fucking done. That's everything, look. Step 39, the final step. Put the jacket on a flat surface, hold this page up, look at the jacket and back to the page. You should have something that looks like this. If you don't, one of us here fucked up somewhere. So um, let me clean this thing up a little bit. I've got some stray threads and stuff that just need to get taken care of. Just polish it up a tiny bit. And let me show you guys this thing as it's supposed to be seen. So I've got everything cleaned up and now it is time to finally reveal the Reese Cooper DIY chore coat that I created. So there you have it. I actually finally finished this jacket from start to finish, something I had never done in my entire life, which is absolutely crazy. Like Reese said in the instructional booklet, it is something that I can be proud of. And is it perfect? Absolutely fucking lutely not. I mean, there's some wonky stitches, weird lines, all sorts of stuff. There's even stuff that I did at the beginning that if I were to do now, I'm sure I would do much better, even though it would still not be very good. But that's the whole point. I'm learning, right? So thank you, Reese, for giving me this experience. Now, what do I think of this DIY kit that Reese made in general? Overall, it's a super fucking cool idea. I wish more designers did it. Like he said, it was kind of a way for him to re-spark his own passion, and I totally feel that. Um, that being said, was it perfect again? No. I mean, so the booklet, there were times where I get that he wanted to keep it really tight and concise, but there were times where I felt like some more instruction might have been good. Like, there were times I didn't know whether I was supposed to be doing things inside out or not, stuff like that. Maybe some real pictures would have been really helpful. And even some of the lines and the pattern pieces, I'm still not sure if I did right. Like, I feel like the collar is supposed to come more over these pieces. Like, those shouldn't be there, really. They should be covered up. So maybe, like, some color-coded lines for different sizes on the pattern pieces. But these are minor things. Overall, this entire concept was amazing, and me coming from the punk scene, I appreciate that DIY ethos so much. And did I learn anything beyond that? Anything greater? I actually think I did, because here's what I learned. This shit is really, really fucking hard. Like, it's a lot of work. You probably saw me go through like 20 different outfits over the course of these videos, and that's because I was working on this day after day, every day and yeah it was a ton of work and it makes me wonder like how do places like walmart or h&m or whatever sell jackets like this for like 10 20 bucks it makes me actually feel better about buying more fashion more high price point stuff because at least i feel like then the money is going to people who deserve it and they're being paid well and i can feel good in that whereas these other places, I don't understand how they can do it, how they can make stuff like this for that price. They must be getting paid pennies on the dollar, as we know that they actually do. So anyway, if you have any questions for me, you want to see more about this, hear more about anything else, hit me up on Instagram. It is low luxury with an underscore at the beginning and end. Uh, take a look at the other video on screen here. Subscribe to my channel. I do a ton of cool videos about clothing, and um, I'll see you guys next time.